at 17. It is uh, September the 19th at uh, 7 p.m. And this is a meeting of the dredging task force. Uh, we'll start with announcements, open session and public comments. Uh, do we have any? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to administrative uh, with roll calls. So we have myself, Allgaier, Aberdale, Annette, Coakley, Felix. We have Will Sullivan, John Wolf, Rich Waldo, and then uh, additional members of the public. We have David Stamatis, and I thought we had somebody, Peggy, on. May have dropped off. And Rebecca Ruffley joined. She's joining now, I see. So uh, next administrative item would be approval of the minutes of meeting from August the 29th. So I take a few minutes, um, <clears throat> take a fresh look at it, and then we can entertain a motion to approve. Yep, Kevin, this is where you guys usually shine. Okay, I put a motion on the floor that uh, we accept the Wellfleet Dredging Task Force minutes of August 20th, 29th, uh, 2022, um, as written. I second. second it. Okay, move on to the vote. Uh, I don't see Alfred on. Uh, Kurt? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Skip? Aye. Joe? Aye. Chris? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, next item on the agenda is an update on uh, permit and lobbyist activity. <clears throat> and when we had our last call, uh, <clears throat> Rich volunteered or was volunteered, <laughs> I'm not sure which to go ahead and make contact uh, with people in the congressional delegation. So Rich, you have an update on that? I do. Um, thank you. Uh, you know, before reaching out to Congressman Keating's office, I had spoke with the lobbyist, Ray uh, Boucher. I, I don't know how to say his last name, but uh, had a conversation with him just to, to basically get myself versed into the situation, some of the past. Mm -hmm. um, I know you guys have caught me up to speed, but as well as to, to get input from Ray. And, uh, you know, I was going to reach out to Congressman Keating's office. I had a different contact and he actually put me in contact with Andrew Nelson. Uh, seems to be a familiar name to you guys. Right. Uh, reached out to Con Congressman Keating's office and was able to schedule an appointment with Andrew. And uh, Rebecca Ruffley and I uh, met with Andrew the Friday before last, uh, about two Fridays ago, we met. We had a fantastic conversation. It was a very good conversation, um, very thorough. Andrew gave me uh, some good, good background into his thoughts. And then I had asked him about setting up a meeting uh, with the Army Corps congressional delegation. And uh, he, he actually even suggested to get the National Marine Fisheries involved as well. And the conversation basically went in, in terms of, of him being able to set up the meeting, he would work towards it. Uh, then we discussed strategies, you know, potential ways on how we can actually move forward with this project. Um, I, I know members here are, are hoping to salvage the fall of, you know, fall winter of 2022. Not sure that's gonna happen, but, um, you, you know, Andrew is aware of the issue and the time. 
And so when we talked about strategy, I think one of the things that we had talked about was maybe going back to them, getting them at the table, and then talk, talking about maintenance versus mitigation dredge and try to see if there's any movement there, um, you, you know, to see if, if there's any angle in that approach and, and really try to work that in, really, really make that presentation that, you know, we're a community of, of 65, 70% national seashore. Um, most of our land is tied up in conservation or it, it's occupied. We don't have land to give. And then also, you, you know, maybe craft an argument in such a way of saying, you, you know, the opportunities that we have now in terms of funding and, uh, you, you know, local dredge, regional dredge, um, things like that weren't available 30 years, 40 goes 50 years ago. And, and a town of our size cannot do a $13 million dredge easy. We count on certain uh, funding sources. So that was our approach. And I think that's the, the, the task that this dredge force should, should actually work on right now is basically put our facts together in terms of the, the maintenance dredge, first mitigation dredge. I know you guys have been down it before, but maybe have another crack at this apple and try to see if we can convince them to, to go in that route. The, the fallback with that conversation, if I could just add on to it, the, the, the fallback, you know, should, should we get them down there? This conversation go nowhere. The thought was to bring back up the Herring River project. Now I, I had talked to Andrew and say, you know, why, why wasn't the Herring River considered before? I mean, we're, we're, we're talking possibly 200 acres of restored uh, shellfish flats on, on the south side of the bridge, let alone all the, the estuary improvements. And, and his, his assumption to me was, was, or what he recalled was the Army Corps wasn't willing to entertain that at the time because it was an unfunded project. And, you know, things have changed. That project is now funded. So then, then comes the discussion was, is it okay to be funded federally? And if, and if that's a roadblock, then, then we have the argument. We also have state funds. We, right. we have the vision of ecological restoration. So we, we have 50 million total. We, we got 29 from uh, NRCS. We have about 20, geez, what's it? 22.7 from DER. So we have two funding sources. So if, if federal is a roadblock and then we have state as a possible alternative. Andrew had also added that he feels that the Army Corps is under immense pressure. And I think that they're, they want to, to solve this and they want to be done with this. And I think at the end of the day, and I think we all know this, that they're looking for something to hang their hat on. And I, I think that, that, you know, our goal is to be able to offer those two projects and pretty much just say, you know, we can't pay you the 13 million. We don't have enough land for the mitigation credits. These are the options. What can we do? How can we make this work for you guys, for, for us? And, you know, basically Keating's office. And so that's really where we left the conversation. Andrew was going to go start you know, pulling his strings, trying to get the conversation down, try to see if we can get these parties to meet. And I told Andrew that we'd put a team together. Um, you know, he advised and he recommended, you know, don't have the whole dredging task force, you, you know, limit it to a few people. Um, right. Some of his suggestion uh, was, you know, myself, Rebecca, the Harbor Master, GEI, Ray, if we can get Ray here, and, you know, and a representative from the dredging task force uh, to, to be there and maybe sit at the table. So collectively as a whole, I mean, that, I think that's something that you guys will have to, to think about and, and discuss. And, uh, you know, when we get a date set, maybe we strategize on some of the factual points that you guys recall hearing throughout, you know, the past couple of years of dealing with this dredge. So that's the update, Chris. Okay, good update. Um, while we're on the topic, though, of, of a working committee, uh, uh, last call, I had suggested that Kurt Felix be that person because he is very knowledgeable on mitigation type issues. So... Um, that would still be my suggestion so far as a, a DTF member on this uh, working committee that meets with them. Uh, on the second part, I agree, we need to pull together uh, so, some of the stuff that we've already done 
literally over the years, but because it was over the years, not everybody at the core sees the same thing. So we'll have to pull it all together and consolidate it and, and maybe freshen up some new points uh, so that we're ready. Um, Chris, if I, uh, if I might. Yeah. Um, uh, Rich, you talked about uh, meeting with Andrew Nelson, whom we know well. Um, there's a key player that I would recommend you also need to talk with, and that's Senator Markey, who has been a huge backer of ours. Specifically, he sits on the committee that has to approve the appointment of the Assistant Secretary of the Army, and that person oversees the Army Corps of Engineers. He's the top person. Senator Markey is on record as telling us that um, when he met with this person before voting for approval, he leaned hard on him regarding our project. And he's also, he has a history of leaving the door open for us to come back to him with updated information in time of need. So I strongly recommend that you touch base with his representatives. And I, I appreciate you saying that, Joe. I mean, just, just let me add that that talking with Andrew, Andrew did mention Marquis' office of trying to bring them in. Uh, he actually talked about uh, Caleb from uh, Elizabeth Warren's office too. So those discussions did had. So when I follow up with him and, and I'll give him to the end of this week, if I don't hear from him towards the end of this week, the beginning of next week, I'll reach out and see if he had any luck, but I'll bring that up. So I appreciate you mentioning that. The other, the other thought is I'm referencing the document um, dated eight, uh, August 30th, 2022, provided to all of us by GEI engineers and on previously reviewed mitigation projects. And the first one is the Herring River restoration. And um, we, we have been advocating for credit for some time for that project. And, and a major part of our advocacy has been um, to uh, try to get them to look at project, projects retroactively uh, in the recent past that we have started. And I wanna quote um, the assessment the engineer put down for Herring River. It is a salt mark restoration project that does not provide a direct equivalence to the habitat being impacted. It takes place largely on federal land and in conjunction with federal regulatory agencies. It is also partially completed. A project cannot be retroactively used as mitigation. That's a real, a real stumbling point. And, and, and again, I think as a dredge team, we got to be able to figure out how we combat that. One, the project is not completed. The project hasn't started yet. We just secured funding. The bids are opening this Thursday. The project hasn't happened. In fact, we're going to have the, the the U.S. Fish and Wildlife down here pretty soon, uh, you know, as a partner of the project. I mean, I mean, this is this is uh, I'm not sure as well as NOAA, uh, hopefully be a partner as well and a funding partner. So, uh, I, again, I, I'm glad you have that wealth of information on where we go. And, and, and I think that's the strategy we need to go moving forward is to be able to point and counterpoint their arguments when we sit down at the table. I want to I want to offer one more quote from the document which I found interesting. The proposed mitigation must compensate for the loss of both area and function of the existing habitat. Projects that do not meet a functionality equivalent are not considered acceptable for mitigation for the proposed loss. I, I think, though, if um, the conversation with Andrew Nelson suggests that they have an appetite for Heron River to be a possible solution, I, I think we need to put everything together, get prepared for it, 
any additional points that we can make. Uh, I think we can revisit some of the other stuff that we had presented, uh, but more for background, it sounds like at this point, the Herring River project would be the one to focus on based on Andrew's conversation with Rich. Well, well, well again, I, I think the idea is to, to go in there with, with revisiting that, that mitigation versus yeah. maintenance and, yeah. and try to exhaust that. And then if, we, if that's not going anywhere, bring, bring the Herring River a, as a solution, almost like a savior project at the end of negotiation discussion of a, of a dead end. Um, you, you know, I think Andrew has enough of an appetite to challenge this, this 30 year, no dredge, it becomes a mitigation dredge. I, I think he has a bit of an appetite for it. I, I think at one point, and, and I don't recall the history, but I, I believe someone had requested the Army Corps or, or if it was the National Marine Fisheries. And again, I, I don't know this information like you guys know it. You guys are are, are very deep into this, but I, I think someone had requested either the National Marine Fisheries or Army Corps provide some evidence of, of this 30 year no dredge uh, limitation. And, and, and I don't know what ended up happening with that. If they actually provided something or when was it adopted? When was it you know, enacted? Was that ever, you know, did that ever occur? Rich, that, that brings up another thought I'd like to share. Um, it's actually their rule is 50 years. That's one of the things they nailed us on. And that leads into, I think it's essential uh, that the lobbyists be present in any meeting that. I'm also going to recommend that I be there. I've been at this for 11 years, worked with the Army Corps for 11 years, am aware of everything they have thrown at us, both uh, realistic and, and outrageous. You know, For example, denying that it ever was a mooring field and we presented documentation, but there's also vulnerabilities that they have um, shown um, that we can use. For example, the core samples of the of the 24 acre mooring field are identical to the core samples of the adjacent channel. Why are they approving the channel which we dredged and not the adjacent mud? Um, the other thing that they are going to throw at us from the history is our engineers over the years have, have um, documented the core samples that they have done in the, in the mooring field would not um, have a negative impact on the small number of living organisms that are there. They dispute that. That's another vulnerable area they have, that we have strong documentation to refute that. So at times they will go around the circle and, and circle back to some of these things and to use against us. And if we don't have a long history um, to refute them, then we're really at a disadvantage. Joe, I'm gonna leave that up to the dredging task force to find out who's the best member to represent. Um, I, I worry that when we sit in this meeting, we're gonna to take too much time on the history of things and not enough time on trying to push this forward. And, and, and I think it's, it's very important to, to be prepared to, to counterpoint their point. I do, but I, I don't want to take too much time in, in rehashing a lot of the history. So um, again, we, 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 when, when we have a date and we have it scheduled, we meet as a team, meet as a task force, we can discuss these things. What's our strategy? What's our point? Um, you know, what, what, where are we going to hang our hat? What are the key things that they don't understand? What do we want to show them when they come down here that they might not know? Things like that. So um, I, I get your point. It is, it is not my intention at all to rehash history. I wouldn't even bring it up. What I'm talking about more specifically is if they try some of the things they have historically tried, that we are ready to bring that up to refute it. 
And, and we got one crack of this apple, so I'm right there with you. I want to make sure we do this right if we get them down here. Yeah. Just uh, a, go ahead, Kurt. Yeah, yeah, just a couple of comments. I think um, one of the things that, you know, I think um, they've not been forthcoming about is what the functional equivalence is. You know, they're making a claim, but they don't, as Joe said, they don't have any data to really back it up. And the, the other thing is, is that uh, the fish, the shellfish industry, the shellfish, the, the uh, constable and um, folks that use that resource right now are considering the current condition of threat to their, you know, to the shellfish industry. So the idea that there's some functional equivalence kind of pales when you look at the fact that, uh, you know, we've got the constable, we have our shellfisher folks um, saying this is a real threat. Um, the, the bottom hasn't changed in, you know, in 50 years. I mean, every year that those moorings go in, uh, they're going into a muddy bottom. Um, so, you know, tell us, tell us what you think that is in terms of functional equivalence, but I would argue um, a salt marsh by any, uh, by any measure is substantially higher function than that current area. So the functional equivalence weighs dramatically in favor of salt marsh over muddy bottom. Um, and in this case, this muddy bottom is a threat to the shellfish industry. So I think those are a couple of key things that they may be sensitive to, um, just on a, um, you know, on a practical level, uh, you know, not getting too deep into the weeds. Thanks, Kurt. With that said, would it be advantageous for us to schedule a meeting to have them to come out here during a low tide or a high tide? Not saying that I know it's going to work out that way, but if we have a choice, and it's low tide. Do we want them out here during low tide, or do we want to see? Yeah. It? Yes, Rich. Yes. It's already been a minus tide. Yeah, I actually, here. I actually took some photos of the the, the most recent minus tide um, that shows very clearly the mooring field from a you know from an elevated angle, um, so that they can they can see what's going on there. Okay. If you know if we can't get them here at low tide. So I would propose uh, in preparation for this, we, we should go back through the various documents we have, the letters that we have, you know, both to and from Army Corps, uh, reports from GEI, uh, put together our, our own, for starters, internal agenda as to uh, what, what the issues might be uh, from their perspective and, and how we would respond to it. So, you know, we, we have information from the shellfish industry in support of it. We have the GEI reports that Joe referenced. I, I think we need to go back through our files, mine those so that we uh, have those documents. We can refresh our memory as to what they say and we can extract some key points to put together uh, bullet talking points so that we, we, we won't have time to go through reams and reams of documents with them in the meeting. So. We just need to be able to have a fingertip control. Um, so that would be my proposal that we uh, go back through our files and I, I'll certainly do the same. If somebody has files to share among ourselves so that we get as many consolidated pieces of information and, and then we can get it organized. If someone has an alternate suggestion, I'm, I'm open to that as well. I think the the letter that we originally sent really you know sort of summarizes most of the best um, you know both habitat and arguments that we had that we had crafted. That's a good place to start. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but even you know, like Joe, for for a while we went down the road where they were saying, "Well, prove that it's been a mooring field." You know, I think we're past that, but but we should just be aware of it. The another item. This 50 year rule, they had said, well, it's, uh, it's new dredging because it's been over 50 years. But I don't think they ever were able to reference a, an actual regulation. I think it was an offhand comment that got picked up as if it were a regulation because I'm not aware of a specific written regulation that says after 50 years. I mean, logic would suggest, yeah, that's a long time, but that, of and by itself doesn't make it a regulation. To my knowledge, Chris, we didn't see any regulations from them stating that. It was more their sentiment. Right, right. Well, we also didn't make a demand for them 
because we haven't been able to talk directly with them. Well, actually, we had that call uh, with Christine Jasek, and and uh, we we talked about the 50 year, and I got the impression that. The reason we didn't get a regulation is because there is none. Um, but again, we'll put it on our on our little crib sheet so that we're aware that at one time that was a concern they expressed, and it's you know we, we're not aware of any regulation. Same with the mooring field. At one time they they were posturing that well it hasn't always been a mooring field. Um, so I think if if we go through and refresh our memories, uh, we can come up with a game plan on it. Rich, if I could make one recommendation, please. This committee has been at it, some of us for 11 years, has, as you said, a depth of knowledge. You have three, with what you're proposing, you have three town officials, yourself, the ATA and the Harbor Master, and only one member of this committee. My recommendation would be that it be structured for yourself, the Harbor Master, and two members from this committee, given the years of work and the knowledge that they've uh, accumulated. Okay, thank you, Joe. Um, uh, again, when the picture gets a little clearer in terms of timing, who's gonna be uh, present at, at the meeting, where we're gonna meet, stuff like that, that then we'll do that. I mean, you, you know, I, I really take this as a key opportunity if we can get them down here, this is our one shot. We, we, we know we have them in the ropes. They, they, they want to throw in the towel. They, they, they do. I think they just want something to, to, to hang their hat that they, they can stand by. And I, I think we, we have solid ground to stand, stand on. So uh, whatever it takes, so I, I'm open to that, Joe. What is the, John, you have a question? Well, I, I just, uh wanted to throw something out there. I've got to be careful about this because I'm just a liaison, but uh, uh, I wondered about the advisability of perhaps having the uh, uh, shellfish warden and or the shellfish advisory committee come up with a some kind of a report detailing the negative impact that the current state of affairs in the mooring field has on our shellfishing that we can include with the material we bring to the meeting. Well, Nancy, it, Nancy actually did put something in writing um, that was very, very good, uh, you know, in terms of a shellfish shell, a letter from the shellfish constable, um, specifically about the negative impacts. Okay. The so letter, yeah, John, that, it's, it's a great point. We do have, we do have something there. The letter that Nancy put in writing um, was a reaction to the Army Corps, one of their positions being that we, we could not be able to dredge because there are shellfish beds adjacent to the mooring field and the encroachment um, of dredging would kill them. Nancy refuted that effectively in her letter. Um, but what we have hung our hat on, again, the history of ammunition to use that is so important. The state of Massachusetts did a study three years ago. They concluded that the greatest threat to the shellfish industry in Wellfleet Harbor is not Vibrio or other diseases, but is the threat of the encroachment of the mayonnaise, of the black mayonnaise. And that's the kind of historical perspective that we need to refute them because when, when it's, it's convenient for them, they resurface these arguments. And we need to be able to throw that state study out there to refute that, like throwing our engineers core sample studies out to refute that. We also actually have our own evidence from the, um, the shellfish um, restoration project across from the pier on the north side. Um, when we started that project in 2011 or 2010, um, there was a fair amount of um, relief in that in that area and that's where Andy decided would be a great area to culch. Um, we went from uh, maybe a few thousand animals to about four to six million. It was annually monitored by um, Maria Frank, Anna Maria Frankick from UMass Boston uh, along with some interns. They, they did a series of reports over five years 
And in the last year, about 2015, we had a significant storm that brought in additional mud and the collapse of the shellfish in that area was because of the overrunning of the black mayonnaise because the area hadn't been dredged. So that killed, that killed a substantial number of shellfish uh, and that was documented in, that, in, you know, in her series of reports. So we do have our own evidence uh, and the same thing's happening on the south side in the Mooring Basin right now. You know, again, and those, those are the case in points that, that we, we need to have prepared. Do, do, do I think that we want to sit there and slide a letter across the table and have them read a letter when we're there? <laughs> no, I think we just want to be able to have the response and let them know that, that, that there's a letter available. And, and, and if they want it, we can get it to them or we could dig it out of the, the depths of the files and stuff. But, you, you know, and that's the strategy. I mean, just talking with you guys, you, 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 your information, your knowledge, it's, it's all there. It, it's all good stuff. We just need to get them at the table. And uh, I, I think we can, we, well, I should, shouldn't say that. I, I hope we, we, we can break this impasse because we all want the same thing. They, they want to move on from it. We want to move on from it. Keating's office wants to make a point and move on from it. And if we have Marquis' office, then hopefully the, you know, between us all, we, we can move past this, capitalize on the grant um, and, and be able to, to dredge the mooring field. Um, in, in terms of timing, uh, you know, again, we, we have this, this tight little window here where we have a grant award. And, and, you know, we want to stay in the good graces of the grant award. And at some point, we got to tell them, hey, you know, we're, we're not going to dredge this, this fall and winter. And, and we're prepared to have that conversation with them now. Um, I, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but, but we, we got to bring this forward to them and say, Here, here's the alternative, okay? We're fighting hard to get this permit. And we want to dredge this mooring field. And you gave us another deadline that, that, you know, if we have a contract executed by June 30th of 2023, we could still use those funds. And we're going to shoot for that. But, Rich, but so you will know, the Army Corps, as a matter of record, is in possession of Nancy's letter. We discussed it with them. They are in possession of our engineers' core sample studies. They are also in possession with us communicating to them and writing about the state study. So they have everything. I know that, Joe. I, I, I know they do. I, they, they have just as much history as you have. And, you know, there might be new players at the table. There might not be. Um, but, but, but again, I, I, I don't want to get into a piss and match with these people saying we gave you this information. Just, just say, you know, we have documentation from the shellfish warden, you know, control the conversation of, of we, we heard you, we heard you with your concern, or we heard you with your statement, and, and this is our follow-up. We, we have, you know, word from our shellfish warden. So uh, I, I know that they have that information. Um, you know, we, we had the communication, I've seen the communication between them. So um, anyway, so back to, to, back to the, the award, the, the Mass Works grant, um, you know, at some point we got to have this conversation with them and, and just, j just be cordial, be, be, you know, frank with them and transparent and let them know, listen, we, we, we don't have the permit in hand. We're, we're setting up a meeting to try to get past our impasse. I don't think it's going to happen this fall and this winter. Dredging is going to happen. We're hopeful that, that we're going to be able to get past this in short order where we might have a permit in hand, say January, February, even March, where we could go back out to bid and we could uh, have a contract executed by June 30th. So um, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but, but that, that's my, my thought right now and our, is the suggestion we should move forward with. Rich, I agree with you. The only thing is I think we should, we should wait till we have the meeting so that we have a little more information. Um, I think without some, some feedback from them, uh, positively, um, you know, it, it, there's there's a lot of uncertainty. If I was in Mass Work shoes, you know, I'd, I'd be saying, you know, well, you haven't got the permit. Where are you in the negotiations? And well, we've got a meeting scheduled in a week or two, and it may be better to just have the meeting and figure out where we are. Yeah, I, I think, think it, it I may think, be worse. It may I be worse. EOHED is well aware. I mean, even at the time just prior to the award, they they were well aware of the permit issues. Uh, and 
and how problematic it would be. So uh, they've been very helpful and cooperative um, and, and they'll continue to be. So I, I agree, we can have the meeting, we should have the meeting. I think the most likely path is as Rich defined that we need to stay on course to get a permit for early next year uh, and set ourselves up contractually and financially uh, to dredge next season. See, John has his hand up. Oh, John. Yeah, is there any point in um, adding to, you know, to, to what we bring to the meeting, um, the strong possibility that if we don't dredge this fall, we're going to have to, to deal with the material that ends up in the areas that already have been dredged at considerable expense, some of which the federal government paid for. Again, I think that that's a point to be brought up, a point to be raised at that meeting. Um, yeah. that's, you know, that's a big issue for me personally as a member of the select board is exactly and if the site yeah. visit it if the site visit shows it and we can see it and you know we, we the tides do work in our favor and we, we can see that channel uh you, you know as being all wet i mean water and then just seeing uh you know the mooring field as as all muddied over just we can demonstrate hey listen this is one of our concerns all this is going to go right into that channel so um i, I think it's a point that needs to be made okay So what do we have next on the agenda here? Well, next on the agenda is the 2022 dredging plans, but I believe we touched on that with our permit discussion um, and the path forward. Uh, so the next item is future plans to reduce sedimentation. Um, I had no updates to that little worksheet that we use from time to time. Um, Last meeting, uh, Kurt gave us an update on something he was working on for Mayo Creek. I don't know if there's a further update on that, Kurt. Uh, the only the only uh, piece of new information is we did put in a um, a request for uh, as part of the wastewater plan, um, you know, to to have Mayo Creek restoration paid for um, with um, uh, Clean Water Trust um, funds. So basically we've, we've, you know, we did a, a filing where we're requesting the funds to be able to do that project um, and get on the IUP list, which would then qualify us for uh, Clean Water Trust, um, uh, probably zero interest and, and most likely also some significant grant um, toward that project. Good. Uh, next item is the sand and the shoaling at the breakwater. Uh, the RFP is ready to go out. It has an, it anticipates an issue date of September 26th, essentially a, a week from today. Uh, Rebecca, are we on track for that? Yeah, we are. Okay. I'm gonna get the ad out uh, Wednesday. I'm off tomorrow. So I'm gonna send the ad out Wednesday. Okay. So we'll go out for bid for engineering drawings and permit applications. Okay, next item, uh, no other business then is uh, when we should have the next meeting. And, you know, this, this may change if uh, Rich gets uh, some further updates as to when we might be meeting externally, but uh, absent that, if we stay with Mondays, we have October 17 or October 24. I'm fine either way. Hey, did you get a new addition? You were supposed to get a new addition for tonight, Don. <laughs> family, family edition. Oh, no, that hasn't happened yet. I'm, uh, I'm still on, on pins and needles. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Any moment. <laughs> They're going to induce her Friday if she if it hasn't happened. So mm. I think I know where my weekend is going. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, sorry for the digression. Seventeenth or twenty fourth? Doesn't matter to me. No, I'm good either way. I can go either way. Kevin, right, let's, 
let's do this. Let's go 24th unless there's something, an activity and and by an activity, I mean, maybe an internal workshop where we have to go through nuts and bolts. We'll set the meeting for the 24th. And if anything happens in between, we, we can reschedule it. But in the meantime, I would ask people to, to mine their files. Um, you know, I'll pull them together and consolidate the ones I have. And if others would do the same, it will at least, have a complete compendium that we can pick from and, and be prepared with. And again, and not to drag out <coughs> external meeting, but just to help uh, form our bullet points. <coughs> Rich, do you need help um, with um, Keen or with um, Marky's office? Or did Andrew provide a contact? At this point, no. Um, I, I think after I, I follow up with Andrew to see if he's had any headway with uh, setting something up. Uh, okay, I, I, I have his chief of staff's information. I'll get that to you. Okay, um, yeah, if you could send that to me, it'd be important. I'd, I'd like to have it anyways. The lobbyist is a key player in this. He has very strong contact with the senator and his chief of staff. I think I recommend yeah. Rich, start with him. Yeah, no, I had a very good conversation with Ray, and uh, he, you know, I, I know we'll be talking again. I, I enjoyed my conversation. I look forward to meeting him someday, and uh, certainly a, a piece of the puzzle. Okay, I'd say at this point we could entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Kurt and Skip in that order. Uh, for that. Vote, Kurt. Aye. Kevin. Aye. Skip. Aye. Joe. Aye. Chris. Aye. Motion passes. Boy, lucky for us. <laughs> good night. <laughs> hey, you guys have a good night. Okay.